Venous thromboembolism is the spectrum of disease from DVT to pulmonary embolism. It's a life-threatening condition with high incidence in the emergency department. Point-of-care ultrasounds both sensitive and specific for identifying proximal lower extremity DVTs. It's accurate, fast, non-invasive, inexpensive, and leads to early identification of DVT, early treatment, and improved patient care. Objectives of this lecture that we'll talk about today are to understand indications for point-of-care ultrasound of the lower extremity for DVT, learn appropriate preparation and technique, differentiate a positive scan from a negative scan via interpretation of vein compressibility, recognize limitations of DVT ultrasound, and lastly, incorporating DVT ultrasound into your clinical practice. In reviewing the emergency medicine literature, ultrasound is 95% sensitive and 96% specific for identifying lower extremity DVTs when performed by emergency medicine physicians, according to a study done in 2008 by Burnside et al., published in the Society for Academic Emergency Medicine. When looking at residents with limited ultrasound experience, a study by Zhang et al. published in Academic Emergency Medicine 2004 showed 100% sensitivity and 91% specificity for detection of proximal lower extremity DVTs using compression ultrasonography. Based on current literature, two-point ultrasound performed by EM physicians evaluating only the common femoral vein and popliteal vein has both good sensitivity and specificity for diagnosis of proximal lower extremity DVTs. A study done in 2001 by Frazé et al. published in the Journal of Emergency Medicine performed two-point point-of-care ultrasound without assessing the intervening vasculature, showed 89% sensitivity and 76% specificity for identifying lower extremity DVTs. In 2000, Blavis et al. had a cap of 0.9 when comparing two-point color duplex ultrasound to formal vascular lab results for the detection of lower extremity DVTs. In 2010, CRISP et al. found 100% sensitivity and 99% specificity for two-point ultrasound. Klein et al. in Annals of Emergency Medicine in 2008 showed 70% sensitivity and 89% specificity using three-point ultrasound compared to formal radiology. Moving on to indications for performing point-of-care DVT ultrasound include patients presenting with symptoms of DVT, so leg swelling, erythema, pain, tenderness, warmth, prominent superficial veins. Patients presenting with symptoms of pulmonary embolism include difficulty breathing, hypoxia, tachycardia, chest pain, hemoptysis, syncope, hypotension, and patients in PEA arrest where you're assessing the patient for a cause. Technique for performing lower extremity ultrasound for the evaluation of DVT begins with proper patient positioning. To increase distension of the leg veins, patients may be placed in reverse Trendelenburg position and or with 30 to 45 degrees of head elevation. The leg should be positioned with the hip slightly flexed, externally rotated, and slightly abducted with the knee in slight flexion, as shown in this image. A high-frequency linear array probe is the preferred probe for most most patients allowing better resolution. The probe is held in transverse position with the indicator to the patient's right, perpendicular to the vein, so the image on the ultrasound screen is an axial or short axis image. Let's begin by identifying the common femoral vein at the inguinal ligament, scanning distally to the medial entry of the greater saphenous vein. Continue to scan down to the bifurcation of the common femoral vein into the superficial and deep femoral veins. Next, identify the popliteal vein in the popliteal fossa behind the knee, scan distally to the trifurcation of the popliteal vein. You want to apply gentle but firm compression along the common femoral and popliteal veins. Patency is confirmed by complete collapse of the vein where the anterior and posterior walls completely touch. With adequate compression, the adjacent artery should also be distorted but not collapsed. 
Scanning distally along the common femoral vein, apply gentle but firm compression every 1 to 2 centimeters. Compress the common femoral vein at the junction of the greater saphenous vein, as shown in this image, as the clot in the proximal portion of the greater saphenous vein has potential to propagate into the common femoral vein, and for this reason should be treated as a DVT. Scan distal to the bifurcation of the common femoral vein to the superficial and deep femoral veins and apply compression to both veins. This is a video of normal compressibility of the common femoral vein and the greater saphenous vein. And here you can see the anterior and posterior walls of the veins are completely touching. Scan distally along the popliteal vein and the popliteal fossa. Here the vein is superficial to the artery closest to the probe. Apply gentle but firm compression every 1 to 2 centimeters until the trifurcation of the popliteal vein. And this is a video showing normal compressibility of the popliteal vein. And here you can see the anterior and posterior walls of the vein are completely touching as well. Inability to compress the vein fully or direct visualization of a thrombus are evidence of a DVT. Here are two images comparing normal on the left and abnormal on the right compressibility of the common femoral vein with a DVT. Here you can see on the left image the anterior and posterior walls of the vein are completely touching and the vein disappears. On the right image you can see a clot in the common femoral vein. Here are two images comparing normal on the left and abnormal on the right compressibility of the popliteal vein with a DVT. Remember here, again, the vein is superficial to the artery, so closest to the probe. And on the left image, you can see the anterior and posterior walls of the vein are completely touching, where on the right, they are not, and you can see a clot in the popliteal vein. DVT ultrasound is incorporated into the DVT clinical algorithm suggested by ASAP. Patients with low pretest probability for DVT as determined by Wells criteria or another clinical prediction rule, and a positive D-dimer should have an emergency bedside ultrasound for DVT performed. If negative, patients should have a repeat study in five to seven days. Patients with moderate to high pretest probability for DVT should have an emergency bedside ultrasound for DVT performed. If negative and D-dimer positive, patients should have a confirmatory study and or repeat study in five to seven days. Pearls for performing DVT ultrasound include optimizing patient positioning, use of a high-frequency linear probe placed perpendicular to the vein during compression, applying adequate compression, scanning the other extremity for comparison, and utilizing the DVT clinical algorithm for medical decision making. Understanding that point-of-care lower extremity DVT ultrasound has limitations, it should not be used to detect deep pelvic or abdominal thrombi and may miss calf thrombi. If a scan is indeterminate and a blood clot cannot be ruled out, treat the patient based on clinical probability of a blood clot and have the patient return for a formal radiology study at the earliest convenience. False negative pitfalls for performing DVT ultrasound include failure to recognize an anechoic DVT and instead assuming visualization of an anechoic lumen without confirming patency of the vessel with compression. Another false negative includes positioning the probe longitudinally instead of perpendicular to the vessel during compression, as the probe may slip off the vein, and mistaking a deep vein for a superficial vein. False positive pitfalls for performing DVT ultrasound include inadequate compression and mistaking a DVT for a lymph node, Baker cyst, hematoma, or abscess. This image is showing an anechoic thrombus where you see the anterior and posterior walls of the vein are not completely touching. So this would be a positive study for a DVT. Here we see a superficial vein in the upper left portion of the image, which is completely collapsing. You can also see the popliteal vein 
which is in the, in the middle of the screen, which is also not collapsing. So here you may mistakenly think there is no DVT if you think the superficial vein is actually a deep vein. You would call this negative when it's actually a positive study. This is an example of a lymph node, and as you can see, it's blind ending. This can be mistaken for a DVT. This is an example of a Baker cyst, which can also be mistaken for a DVT. Another pitfall is patients with lower extremity edema or obese patients tend to be more difficult to scan. A lower frequency probe with deeper penetration may be needed to identify blood vessels. I'd like to make a special thanks to Dr. Mel Megan Kelly Herps for donating her ultrasound images and to Mary Elizabeth Taylor for the hand-drawn images. Thank you.